For Daily Race B this week, we're at the Red Bull Ring in Group 3 cars on racing hard tyres. A terrible combination at the best of times, but this week the meta is the Mitsubishi Lancer of all things, a car that tries to kill you at any given opportunity. So with that in mind, here's a lap guide. Heading on to the straight to begin our lap. There's no setup this week other than brake balance, which I've got on default. I am running with weak ABS though. First thing you want to look out for is this kerb on the left. You want to make sure you're straddled right across this kerb. Make sure that your outside tyres are to the right of the centre line, because otherwise you'll get a penalty. Our first braking marker is the 100 metre board, and you want to be braking just before that. We're going to brake in a straight line and change down to second, which is the point we're going to start to turn in. We're only going to go second for a little bit of extra rotation. As soon as we head towards the next bend, we are going to be changing straight back up to third. On the next corner, you want to be cutting right across the kerb. But again, make sure that your outside tyres are to the left of the kerb. Otherwise, you're going to be picking up a penalty. Also, keep an eye on the throttle. You'll notice I'm not on full power yet. You've got to be really careful on the throttle with this car. Be really smooth getting up to full power, because if you mash the throttle, you're just going to spin the car out. Don't be afraid to use a bit of traction control if you need it. It's better to be slightly slower than facing the wrong direction. And you can see me build up the throttle until I'm confident that I'm not going to spin out. I've paused it here to show how much of this kerb I'm actually using, but again, you've got to be careful to keep your outside tyres on the kerb, otherwise you're going to pick up a penalty, which is really easy to do on this part of the track. From there, we're just going to be gunning it down this straight. Now, because it's such a long straight, it makes that previous corner all the more important. A poor exit from there can really affect the lap times. Now, as we come up to this kerb, we're looking for our next braking marker, which is just before this 100 metre board on the left-hand side. You're going to want to start braking on the tarmac and then move over onto the kerb in order to maximise the turn into the hairpin. Again, be careful not to get a penalty by going too far over. We're going to turn in just before the end of the kerb and notice that we are briefly going down to first gear. This is just to aid rotation and we'll be changing straight back up the gears again before we get to the next bend. Again, we're going to be cutting right across this kerb. Be careful of cutting too much because you don't want to hit that yellow kerb on the right. It'll unsettle the car. And again, you want to make sure your outside tyres are to the left of the kerb in order to avoid picking up a penalty. For the gearing for this corner, there's a couple of options. I've done it in second, which is slightly quicker, but the car can be very twitchy on exit. In a race, or if you want a bit more stability, it's worth going a straight switch from first to third as you approach the corner, and it does make the car more stable on exit. Either way, you want to be careful of the throttle as you go around the corner. Be very gentle building up the power until you're confident that the car is straight and then you can get onto full throttle. Also be careful of going too far wide and picking up a penalty. As with the first corner, a poor exit from the hairpin can really affect the lap times. From there, you're looking out for your next braking marker, which is just before this 100 meter board on the left hand side. As before, you want to start braking on the tarmac and then move over onto the kerb to give you a better line through the tight corner. Changing down the gears, I go down as far as first gear on this lap, although it is possible to do this bit in second. You're aiming to get as tight to the kerb on the right hand side as you possibly can, and then immediately change up to third as you approach the corner. Notice again that I'm being really gentle on the throttle as we go around here. It's another corner where it's very easy to spin out on, so you're feeding the power in gently until you're confident that the car is straight, and then you can get fully on the throttle. As you go around the bend, you want to be getting over to the right hand side and right over the kerb. As before, we are fully straddling the kerb. Again, watch out for going too far wide and picking up a penalty. And our next braking marker is just before the 50 meter board on the right. As I turn in, I'm changing down to second gear because I need the rotation in order to stay as tight as possible to the kerb on the left hand side. As we're going around the bend, I change up to fourth gear, but notice that I am not fully on the throttle. If I hit full power now, I would just fly off and go over the kerb on the opposite side. You've got to feather the throttle as you go around the corner and judge when it's safe to get onto full power. You want to be straddling right across this kerb, but as before, you've got to be careful you don't go past the center line because you don't want to be picking up a penalty, which is very easy to do on this kerb. Our braking point is just before the end of the kerb, but you want to make sure that you get your left tyres over the white line before you get past the end of the kerb, otherwise you'll pick up a penalty. I take this corner in third gear and feather the throttle. 
but you can do it in second if you need the extra rotation in order to hug the curb. You want to change up to fourth gear as you go round the curb, but you notice I'm not fully on the throttle just yet. This is another corner where you've really got to judge the power and when to get on full throttle because it's very easy to overshoot and go wide. Once you get over here, we are right on top of the curb as usual, straddling across the red and white curbin. As always, be careful of the center line and make sure your outside tires are to the left to avoid a penalty. Be careful when you're driving around the bend, it's quite a deceptive corner. It's very easy to put in too much steering lock and for the back end to start to slide out. Similarly, if you don't put enough steering in, it is very easy to go far too wide on the exit. Saying that, you want to be on full throttle as soon as possible. With this being a long straight, it makes quite an impact to your lap times. Then you want to be getting right over this curb on the left hand side. As always, straddling across the red and white curbing and watching out for going too far to avoid picking up a penalty. Looking out for our braking marker, it is the Marshall box on the left hand side and you want to brake just before you get to that and then turn in pretty quickly afterwards. We're going to be taking the corner in third gear and trying to cut as much of the kerb as possible in order to give us more space on the exit. The reason for this is we want to switch up to fourth gear as soon as possible but you still need to manage the throttle to avoid going wide on the next kerb. You're aiming to get as far on the kerb as you possibly can but obviously not too far that you're going to get yourself a penalty. And then you're going to be hitting the brakes just before the end of the red and white stripe section on the left hand side. We're going to change down to second and turn in. We're aiming to cut right across the kerb opposite. Now you don't want to cut it too much. Again, we're trying to avoid a penalty and you don't want to hit the yellow kerb in too hard because it unsettles the car on exit. We're already up to fourth gear as we go past the corner and we're feathering the throttle so we don't go too far wide on exit. Again, we're aiming to straddle right across this kerb without going too far wide and picking up a penalty, which is very easy to do on this final corner. Then from there, it's just a straight sprint to the finish line to complete our lap. The lap is shared in game. Just search for Jimster71 if you want to use it as a ghost. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.